Can everyone at the back just take a couple of steps forward for me? Uh, those that are having a conversation at the back, you guys can step forward and just come and engage. So we can just introduce everyone. Firstly, has everybody got a drink? Does anyone want a drink that hasn't got one? Wow, we're all prepared. Come in guys, step in, because I think it's going to be a little bit quiet. Can you hear me at the back? Yeah, everyone can hear it? That's it guys, keep coming in, I can see you all gently venturing in. Come on. There's some seats down here if anyone wants to grab a seat. Lady in the red dress with pizza, there's one on the end for you there. Anyone else got your name in it? Just, uh, Ladies have a seat, well done. Perfect. Okay guys, welcome to Hack Soto, thank you very much for coming. Um, I'm Sebastian, I'm one of the relationship managers, I like to call myself here at Hire Active. Uh, so if anyone has any questions about the company, or wants to know anything, please feel free to come and meet me. My business cards are on the, uh, the bar over there, so grab one of those. Uh, I'd like to introduce Abdullah, he's going to be our speaker for tonight, and he's going to be talking about cracking and hacking in the blockchain world. I did read that off the screen because I couldn't remember it, so I don't know if saw that. Cheeky glance. I'm going to hand over to you. Good luck. Thank you. All right. oh, do you want to save the questions till the beginning or do it at the end? No questions. No questions. I think you're going to be funny. Yeah, but I, I actually mean, I actually mean, that it's not that kind of a thing as uh, uh, Louise would have actually said to you guys. Right, guys, so the name is Abdullah, and um, first, question number one is everyone over here 18 plus? We are all 18 plus, right? You ain't. Oh, she is. All right, all right, all right. All right. No, it's not that I've used foul language, it's just the fact that, I don't know, I have innuendos like Nigella Lawson, and uh, sometimes I do discuss ideas that may be a bit adult in nature. And probably, yes, this hacking and cracking thing is a little bit of an adult thing in nature, right? Um, and just please be prepared to have a little bit of a shift of mentality, or at least open your minds up to hacking being something else, as is probably known around. Right, so the agenda that we'll see, let's just start. So what exactly is a hack? When you go around and search for it, you will actually find 80-90% of the time, it's actually characterized as something else. It's like literally defined as probably something else. I would actually say making something perform in another way than originally intended. Simple as that, right? That is what a hack is. For example, I'm very sure on Instagram and YouTube and whatever, we've all seen uh, life hacks. You know what I'm trying to say? It's like, what can you do with a damn banana or put toothpaste on on your on your sneakers or something like that, right? So what is that? That's a life hack. For example, ah, something that I do a lot if you come to my flat. Using a radiator to dry clothes. A radiator isn't really supposed to do that, is it? But you just hack it, you work it so that it does something else for you. That's a hack. You're hacking your way around life. Right. Now another example of a hack that we do very often. Shall I say, I do it once every quarter commercially, right? In Australia, we do it. But we use an iPad as a kiosk. The last thing that I did was, we printed uh, t-shirts in Australia, if you bought whatever in whatever mall, you could make your own t-shirt, and it was a pretty cool thing that we did. But while, let's just say a few years ago, we would have actually had to get proper equipment and whatever you may want to call it. This time, we just had an iPad. An iPad opened up full screen is enough. It's a fully equipped terminal to do absolutely anything. It can recognize you, it can judge you, it can do a lot of stuff. An iPad or a touch screen the way it is given with a camera, shall I say, is a pretty hackable device. So, I would actually say that hacking is a creative, improvised solution to a problem that cannot be solved because of technological restrictions. I won't just say technological restrictions, I would actually say even money. Like, for example, if you guys, um, 
Have you, do you guys know of that bus hopper plan thing in, in London? That says you can actually probably take two buses uh, with within the same... An within an hour. Within an hour, right? And they were instantly stopped saying, right, you can actually travel <coughs> what, 23 kilometers in London on a single fare, right? Um, not 23, it must be less than that. But in any case, now that's a hack. That is absolutely a hack that says, before you complete your journey, just get off at this bus stop, take the next one, the number two, that will take you even further, and yeah, huh, go ahead and enjoy one pound fifty it is, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, in one pound fifty, go ahead, there's go to the... Standard, there's not tax. Say again? There's a standard feature, there's not tax. It's not, I it's think... It's not a tax, it's a standard feature. It's an intended feature? Yeah. It's, it's, it's an intended feature, it's an intended feature, but when you travel, let's just say, a distance with it, when you travel a distance with it, especially, let's just suppose, rather than finishing up your journey, getting off and just say, right, I'm not going to go further up to Victoria, I'm just going to get off three or four stops back, take the next one, that actually makes it a hack. I understand, I understand how you're saying that it's a feature, I understand that how it's a feature, but when you, when you push it, shall I say? It looks like that, it's the same feature with the credit card. If you don't charge 12 pounds, after that it's free. If you don't charge? No, they, they daily charge you 12, 12 pounds, after that it's free. So you can drive how much you want after 12 pounds. And, so and, and probably, I would actually say, right, the life hack that I use all of the time. I use the, uh, when you run out of the 500, quit limit on your ATM withdrawal, what do you guys do? I know, sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to. Right, so a very simple hack to this situation is go to the waitress people and just buy a pack of chewing gum and ask them for 20 or 50 quid, right? And it generally gets approved. So, let's just say a crack. Now, a crack is something else. It's trying to work around a situation, right? It is exactly like, for example, um, a walnut, trying to crack a walnut. Just take that example, and that is exactly probably what cracking is. And in general, it, the manifestation of cracking does come into something like that. That says you crack it, you just apply pressure on it, you brute force it, or if you know exactly where the bends in that walnut thing are, you know where to crack exactly, right? But cracking is generally always a bit of um, a brute force. For example, trying a number of dictionary user password for a hit. Let's not forget that five, six years ago, the most common passwords used to be uh, city names, believe it or not. And that's the reality. A hack nowadays is uh, a lot of people, their PIN codes are their lover's date of births, isn't it? Right? So, uh, let's just say that uh, that thing is probably also a crack where you know exactly where to look at where you have a predefined idea of where you want to look at and what you want to get into. So cracking, I'd actually say, is more or less of a desperate solution around to get into something. And I don't know, if you've actually been in the cracking community, we, we, we'll get over there. Um, it is a little bit like that. But let's just say, um, <coughs> Cracking is getting something done by hook or by crook. Sitting on it all night long, and then something turns up when you spin it a little bit too much. Right, so you guys do understand that I'm not talking about hacking in the sense of hacking into a system. I am going to the basics of it. I'm saying how, what exactly is it? You can use it for whatever purposes that you want, which we'll discuss, but hacking in itself is the simple task of pulling something together and doing something with something that is not supposed to do 
what you want it to do. Right. So, and cracking is, I, I, I generally call cracking the equivalent of brute forcing. Right? You can recognize where exactly to look at. You can see where the cracks are. You can see what to do. But, and you probably know that because out of your previous experiences or knowledge that has been shared with you. But cracking is something generally always of a brute forcing nature. Right. So this is a little bit, uh, how shall I say, alternative in nature, right? I would actually say that hacking and cracking are absolutely awesome tools, right? Uh, you guys need to understand, I hate saying it absolutely straightforward as that, but I do work with developers. I have to hire people. Um, I understand the concept of political correctness. But let's not forget that a good 10% of the population cannot code, right? Uh, the reason is probably how our brains are wired. Um, you would sometimes find that developers or people who program can literally write poetry, right? Or are of that nature, shall I say. So number one, it is a creative exercise, right? So when you train your brain to perform some task, a few people are unable to do that. Let's just say a good 10% of the population. What do they do? Can they train their brains? Yes, probably so. Uh, do you guys use your uh, uh, brain training exercises? Have you guys ever done that, right? And does it work, by the way? Does it work? Have you guys tried a life hack? Right, now I'm actually going to, going to go absolutely deep. Have you guys ever tried uh, a brain training exercise which we, actually call, which we actually call mind hacking? That says, you train your mind saying, wake me up, I'll wake up at this X time. And you do wake up at that X time. Right? Your body does have an internal clock. You do know what's going on and you can manage it. That's also brain training. Brain training can hack your life, shall we say. Right? That's also a hack that, that's, that probably exists inside of you. Uh, you just need to approach it. Right, so for them being tools, I'd say number one, they are creative tools. Uh, you solve problems with it, right? Uh, it actually always gives birth to new ideas. Uh, hacking always give birth, gives birth to new ideas. It fixes flaws, right? Uh, it enhances our security. And uh, sometimes, for example, the way that I use hacking nowadays is uh, something of a proof of concept and implementation, right? And <laughs> that's how hacking, I would say, is being used at the moment. I would say that this innovation period or this innovation era where uh, computers are cheap, where technology is very accessible, where people also have the knowledge and the skills, um, I'd say that proof of concept and that initial POC and implementation, that is where hacking is being used in today's world. Um, I would actually say demystifying hacking. Look. Why do we need to just consider it as such a negative thing? Why do we need to consider it like such a negative thing? You guys need to understand that the hacking that happens in the world, a good 70, 75% of that hacking goes towards the good. FYI, it does not get reported, right? It does not get reported because it probably happens within labs at the MNCs. Sorry, my lawyer has said I cannot name names. But uh, let's just say that uh, the hacking that goes around in the world, the one for good, outweighs the bad one by a huge margin. And we don't even get to hear about it. What we get to hear about is small little bounties when, when they are given away or when something is found out. But what we do not get to figure out is the hacking that probably happens at the corporates, right? And uh, they hack it all of the time. So 
let me give you guys a very, very, very crude example from, how should I say, the 90s. Um, <clears throat> cold Cold Canada and the phone booths. So what actually happens is, do you guys remember that time when we used to have those Pepsi and Coca-Cola bottles, the, the, you know, the glass ones that had a cap? Right. So that cap, if you were to put water in it, freeze it, you could actually use it at the phone booths in Canada. And because it's cold, it wouldn't really melt. So go ahead, put a few in your pocket, and uh, make a few calls. So uh, somehow or the other, telephone. Telephone is something that has always been um, a hacking person's uh, go-to target. There is a special word for it as well. They're called uh, freakers with a BH or something like that, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's somehow the telephone that, that interests us, doesn't it? It's not even just the telephone. You will find that the communication channel is what actually interests us. Be it the internet, be it the telephone, be it a blockchain network, but that communication channel, that is what probably interests us. Um, so another example of uh, hacking. Another example of hacking is, for example, in my neighborhood, just around the corner, um, there's like this foreign dignitary, and what happened was outside his home, uh, the police was called and his wife was actually on the street and there was a huge big drama. Apparently what happened was, I think very common, but I just saw it with my own eyes. She apparently, while he, the guy was asleep, she just used the fingerprint thing, and uh, well, the police was there. We had a lot of fun in our neighborhood. It was like a drama to see. But when it actually happens right in front of you, <laughs> when you can see it, then it's a different thing, right? Okay, so if you go to like uh, very far flung places over here, I'd say Suffolk and Norfolk, sometimes you will be presented with the old five quid note because the people over there have not even seen the new ones, right? And uh, sometimes you come to London with them. What do you do with them? What you do with them is, uh, unfortunately, the waitress machines don't do cash. But if you go to a Tesco machine, right, it, it still accepts it. It actually still accepts it to date. So that is another hack. That is a real life hack that you can use. If you've got a five quid old note, please go into a Tesco machine and uh, you can use it. So now let's also look at the other side of it. When was the last time that we actually saw compression, the, the compression technique in computers being used to the full? The last time that we saw it being used was when we used to have the copper wires that used to only carry 56.6 kbps. We were restricted by the hardware. We were restricted by the internal infrastructure. And what the ISPs actually did were, they actually applied modem compression. And that was the last time that compression was actually probably even developed a little bit further, right? Um, so there you have it. That's a hack. Bubble wrap. Bubble wrap was originally intended to be a sort of a wallpaper. I'm sure that that's going to be a wallpaper for an insane asylum, I'm sure, because I don't see how else could you use bubble wrap as wallpaper. But look at where it actually uh, turned <coughs> it into. And uh, right, the complete IoT industry as itself, as, as it exists at the moment, is absolutely, completely based on hacks. It's a buzzword. I, I, I also participate in it. That's all right. But, uh, it's, it's asking Alexa, for example, to make you toast. Can you guys think of it? It sounds pretty easy, right? What is that? That's, that's, that's just hack. You're just hacking the system around you. Unfortunately, when I got my first Alexa, I think I just spent time saying what's the baddest word that she can repeat. You know? <laughs> and if you guys were to see me after that, I can tell you the max limit that she'd reach, right? <laughs> but, uh, <coughs> but something like that. So <coughs> what Alexa, for example, what, what that Amazon Echo device did was, 
it did open up a route to, how shall I say, hack it. Because it was a novelty, just asking it to say stuff for you, just to connect your daily life with it, was all a hack. For example, I did a lot of hacks with uh, Amazon Alexa. Um, it's a perfect device for that. And uh, a, no a novel device as well. But in, in general, in total, I would see all of the IoT industry at the moment is a giant big hack. We hack stuff up together, right? The protocols I understand are being <coughs> defined or whatever, but in the absence of the, the, of the protocols where people get together on the same platform, what's happening is, yeah, for example, all right, I, I, let me give you guys an example. I can make you guys, uh, your, uh, we, we, we provide custom developed hubs for you guys, right? That says it can do anything that you want. The last one that I made uh, healed you. That said, it actually asks you questions and would therefore dispense medicine, would give you advice according to your medical situation. What did I do? I just hacked a device to do something that I wanted to do. Right? So the IoT complete industry as is, is all about a hack. We just join things together. We are currently just experimenting. We are just having fun. But the IoT industry is a good example of, of hacking stuff up together. So what do you guys think about hacking, by the way? Do you guys absolutely see it as a negative thing? Is, is that the general conception? I, I know in the medical field, we've been talking a lot about IoT. Like, for instance, pacemakers are totally hackable. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think the last that actually happened was, I think it was, yeah, they, they actually started targeting people like that. And I think at least uh, in the US, Joe Biden actually had a little incident as well. Did Cheney have some pacemakers? Probably, probably. I think I, think I must have been mistaken. It's, it's probably him. But there was actually a, a small little incident regarding that as well. Plus, have you guys heard of that new thing that's going on in Latin America with the U.S. Embassy, where they're receiving those calls and falling ill and all of that? Reminds you of the 70s, reminds you of the 70s, but is probably happening all over again. What is that? That's also probably a hack. That is also a hack. Ultrasonic, supersonic sound waves that we cannot hear and making them work for us. Is a hack. Simple as that. Yeah, and there's been um, people who have hacked, have had Alexa and other home devices activate commands by using supersonic frequencies. Yeah. Simply because the microphones will pick up frequencies that you can't hear, so they can um, call you up. And I think it's been patched by now, but they send over the supersonic frequency that Alexa would um, respond to normally, but you wouldn't even know how. You wouldn't even know how. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, uh, right. I, I do come from a very uh, marketing side of the affairs. Um, we had a very cool hack recently, right? And the hack was that Domino's Pizza released an ad in the US, and the ad just started with, hey Google, can I order up a Domino's Pizza, right? And it actually responded. Now, I was like, yes, that is like mass hypnotism or something like that, right? <laughs> that is like really hacking it with the help of the television. Um, do you guys know of that concept that says if you, um, if you show people within a running film or within a running sequence of images, an image less than a quarter of a second, um, it, while you do not remember it, it does register somehow in your memory. So let's just suppose if during this thing there was a flick of less than a quarter saying smoke, then what's actually going to happen is when you guys leave here, it's it's there, it's implanted, and never know. You guys may be pushed towards it. Now that's another hack. That's a bad hack. That's a bad hack. Um, but I would actually say hacking has made new ideas. It has actually made new devices. I think I make new devices out of hacking all of the time. I, I, I make stuff do 
which it's not even supposed to do. That's exactly what a hack is. And I would also say hacking is the first step towards an invention. That's how you start it. If you want to do something, of course the whole hardware is not going to be available. You're going to mix up things together. You're going to make things work together to perform something that um, you want it to do. But then, then comes morality. When we, we, we have the power to do stuff, right? Human beings, we are very uh, conniving, shall I say, right? Uh, we're exactly like, I, I always say, we're exactly like crows. Um, but how shall I say, morality is self-defined. Look, what is right and what is wrong, who is the one who's deciding that? If we want to talk about morality, um, once again, we've all seen those videos where the dog is very ashamed. No? Right? When the dogs do something bad, they're very ashamed. You can see it in their face. It's recorded and liked a hundred million times. Right? What is that? That is probably just saying that the dog has an inbuilt morality. So rest assured that being the mammals that we are, within each one of us, there is this self-defined morality. We do know, or at least by our own definition, we do know what is right and what is wrong. So, morality. I hate to say this, but let's just say that well, you have to grow up or something. But I just used to say that, oh, if it's on the internet, it's mine. Does that make any sense? I, I was like, right. <coughs> who buys music? Who buys software? Uh, I think when I actually had to get my first ever uh, AWS instance is when I changed because I had to change my ways. <laughs> Otherwise, no. I was like, right, if it's online, it's, it's mine. Something like that. But then you change, I guess. Um, hacking is, by the way, also criminalized by default. In Asia, you cannot do a pin dash T. It's illegal. Yes, you cannot do a pin dash T. I was just like, all right, for example, I also have a morality in the sense that I was thinking of giving a hacking example over here, and I think connecting to someone's network, doing an nmap trace, is just simply plain bad manners. Right? What's the P dash T? Say again? What's that P dash T thing? Was ping dash t. Sorry, can you repeat that? The P dash t. Ping, ping dash t. Ping dash t. What is oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ping dash t is a continuous ping. ping generally, dash. generally, when you ping a computer, it just does like depending upon your operating system, 15, 20, 12, whatever, right? Well, so in especially in Windows system, that applies in Windows system. So, con sending a continuous ping to a computer system in a few Asian countries is considered basically. You can't do it. Right. Uh, it's an attack. The world runs differently. Look, you cannot have an open WRT uh, router working in the US. Not allowed. The country has decided no. So it's a no. Simple. Right? And on the other hand, when you look at Canada, Canada allows you, I think there are only two countries in the world, only Canada and Bolivia. These two countries allow you to hack your Wi-Fi to increase the TX rate, to increase the baud rate to the maximum. And uh, therefore, in Canada and Bolivia, your Wi-Fi goes further and faster. Not really faster, but shall I say further, right? But um, now, now, that is basically a hack, and that's not allowed in the rest of the world, right? We do have to, how shall I say, um, live by the rules. <laughs> Okay, a few examples of, of, for, of, of what I hack with all of the time. Monitors and as notes goes. Um, once upon a time, there was like this government huge big department who gave us a lot of old screens. What <coughs> I simply did was I was like, right, let's just make them as notes boards everywhere. Then I realized that the sun's rays, when they fall directly on the cathode ray of the old monitors, the monitors don't survive. But then again, I had so many. I had like, I don't know, 150 or something. I also had manpower. I was like, right, let's just keep on replacing that 
It was every two weeks. So, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but what else was I going to do with them? I just had them. I just had them. Right, touch screens as kiosks, I just absolutely love it. Storing data in an image, I'll, I'll just show you guys an example of that. The Vodafone project. Jeffrey, unfortunately, can't be around. Uh, it's like 4 a.m., otherwise he was supposed to be around from Australia, telling you guys something about the Vodafone project. Uh, that was also pretty much based on a hack. What we did was, you were met in a shopping mall with a pretty dressed up fella who would actually say, hey, you want to race with me? And all you did was, you just went into a URL, and right on those huge big screens, you were racing with that guy with Vodafone versus Telstra, or uh, whatever they actually had available. That was a pretty cool thing that we did like three, four years ago. But all based on a hack. The notice boards were hacked. The huge big screens were hacked. <coughs> your mobile browser working as a uh, something to determine speed. That was also a hack. And of course, marketing is generally a hack in itself. I have hacked websites too when I was young. And an emergency transmitter. So sorry, where I've lived, once upon a time, we were, we were taught that. We were taught that. We were taught on... Uh, what to do in case of an emergency. Very weirdly, I also know the complete Morse code. But uh, yes, um, you get to know these kind of things. I would actually say that the software that you see as well, the hardware that you see, it does start off with a hack. <clears throat> software nowadays is sometimes sometimes a copy-paste or a template-based thing as well, right? If you make it work in a different sort of fashion for you, is, is when it, it's actually a hack, right? Um, a hack is also about getting it done. You have a task, you, for example, you actually got to say that I need to make sure that this office is properly cool without the help of human beings. Oh, the hack that I'm doing at the moment, right. I'm actually trying to make a dog latch thing, right. My must latch pretty old, but I'm actually trying to do something with it so that very securely, I want to give him an RFID thing and I'd just like him to enter in and go out as he pleases without disturbing me. But yeah, like that's a hack. Yeah, yeah. In your own backyard, in your own home. You got to experiment with these kind of things. It takes, consider these things as DIY projects, right? They're going to take nothing more than three, four days. At least your, I don't know, for single people, I guess Sundays are bad, right? So that's a good Sunday exercise to do. That's a good thing to do to keep your mind away. So this Sunday, think of what you guys can hack around you. In your room, I don't know, can be a light. Can be a light that turns on or turns off. Right? Just get that small little 20 quid Wi-Fi plug-in device and at least get the lights under your control. Right? Something like that. And it's, it's, it's a simple exercise. It's just you got to make things work for you. And it's all about getting it done. And then it's all about knowledge. When I say it's all about knowledge, I'm talking about cracking. I'm not talking about hacking. Hacking makes knowledge. When you join stuff up together is when, for example, you gain knowledge, right? You figure out techniques, you figure out the mistakes, you figure out, you would sometimes figure out a lot of unnecessary information, trust me. It's like, for example, I may know all of the uh, codex for uh, video in the world available. Why? Because we had to actually hack a DVD player. So you learn, right? You learn. But hacking converts it into something else. It makes knowledge. With cracking, you need to either work with the existing knowledge that's available, or I don't know, do it a couple of times. Have you guys, by the way, has anyone over here ever tried to hack a website? Huh? No, 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 it's all right, it's all right. Everyone has done that. Look, 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 we were all young. I blame it on youth. I blame everything on youth. I blame everything on youth. <laughs> but we've, 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 look, we've done that. Yeah. I've done it. Yeah, I've, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure. I, I hate to say this, 
and being absolutely honest and real, I think I would have done it to gain access to uh, adult material when I was young. I think, and I'm, I'm very sure for a lot of people it does start roughly over there, right? Or at least for the guys, or at least for the dudes. It all starts with us from trying a dictionary attack, right? Um, or probably, I think, uh, for a lot of people um, who are love bugs, uh, it's like probably figuring out what your partner's doing or something like that that gets us there. But whatever gets us there, I think we all do something about it in the sense that we do in our daily lives as well. For example, yeah, I, I have like this thing. It just, ha, it just opens up. So this is a hack for me, in the sense I know, so it doesn't drop or whatever. We, we all have something about it. It's just the fact where to take it further to. So there is an evil side to hacking as well. And as I'm telling you guys, the hacking that goes on in the world, trust me on it, a good 75% of it is for the positive. Do not forget that what we get to see in the media is just bad stories. Right, in, in the truth of the matter, unfortunately over here in the UK, we fall prey to political correctness, right? Well, once upon a time, let's just say that I was a media buyer and I was asking a huge big uh, publisher for his rates. He looked at me and he was like, right, these are our regular rates, but when, an, when a tragedy happens, of course the rates go up, right? So they do earn, the media does earn out of human misery, number one. Number two, as, a, uh, um, as an evolutionary measure, our brains are tuned to listen to the negative, right? So, yes, um, let's not forget that there was this one, uh, uh, one thing that happened uh, early in the 2000s that was like good news. That was like we also need to push the good news that is happening in the world because our minds are actually simply just being trained to listen to bad news and we are susceptible to it in the sense that's our evolutionary measure. Right? So please don't listen to everything that you see in the media. We have just seen a, it's, isn't it right in front of us? What, what happened in the US and whatever, right? You can show people a couple of ads. Ha, ah, it was easy, wasn't it? Right? So just please don't listen to what they actually tell you. Um, they also exaggerate stuff. And I would actually, at least what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to absolutely paint a positive picture of hacking, because that is what it is, right? You can use it for whatever purposes, and let's for a moment just talk about the evil side of it. So, it is bad. It is bad, by the way. It's, it's, it's not all right. And it's unfortunately a growing problem. Uh, the more that we get connected, the more that we are together, the more problems we have. Right, so just, just very quickly. 69% of the corporates by now think that antiviruses don't work. Can I give you guys a very quick uh, thing saying how not to get hacked? It's, it's a bit expensive. Huh? <laughs> move to iPhone and move to a MacBook. Period. As simple as that. As simple as that. No, it's not. What? As simple as that. <laughs> It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's actually inherent. If they tie you down, it's, it's probably for a reason. <clears throat> Another big thing that you guys need to see, 55% of 2018 hacks have so far been crypto mining related, right? Which is now a big thing. So uh, I was actually discussing a project with Michael Jenke in Australia. What is the most unused connected device ever? It's your Wi-Fi router. It gets used roughly three, four hours a day at your home, and it gets used roughly seven to eight hours in your office. The rest of the time, it's just simply sitting there doing nothing. Is it? Right? So running a crypto miner on it 
is that like such a bad thing? <laughs> is that such a bad thing? I'm so sorry. Like, I mean, I can understand if I was taking processing power off your mobile phone right now. I understand that. But like, if you've got your computer on all of the time, if you just like go out of your, how about we use that processing power, right? But unfortunately, it's also being used a little bit sneakishly, and, uh, which is not all right, which is definitely not all right, and which is a very big problem, which is a big problem. Nowadays, uh, yeah, the, I would say in the, in, in the world of hacking and cracking, not hacking and cracking the blockchain, but hacking and cracking in the general sense of it, crypto. Yeah, that is the latest trend. We've, we've had, as I'm saying, 55% of 2018 hacks have absolutely been crypto mining related. But mate, they're just trying to use the power of your computer, which you're probably not using it. Uh, I'll turn down the rhetoric a little. Right, so just like a little bit of a brief history, just the major things. I think the first hack kind of happened with the Telegraph. I think um, there was a demonstration saying that the system is now even more secure. And what a gentleman just did sitting right back at the end of the room was that he just put in some F words and some C words to come out of the telegram. And that was out of the telegram. And that was the first hack ever like that, right? Then we had the Enigma machine. Uh, we do know about the Enigma machine, right? It's at least in Europe we know about it a lot. It, um, it made us win the war, right? Freaking, yeah, that's the word. As I said, we've got something with the telephones, don't we? It's like, you, you just like put in a public phone booth out there, and it's like, yeah, I don't know, it just attracts me, doesn't it? It's like, let's do something for that. It can dial the number for a um, Right, and then probably the first sort of a hack in the modern sense was the IBM's APL network. It was just done up by the students and uh, they were actually later thanked for debugging. So, unfortunately I don't have my computer, otherwise I want to show you guys this. Uh, and I actually want to show you guys my emails, basically. Yeah, sometimes I just open up my emails. The dirty cow hack, um, every single year, I'd say, because of uh, vulnerability, if you want to call it, or because of the change of the nature of computers, we have a massive hack each and every single year, which we need to save ourselves off. Um, we, we will talk about getting hacked. Would you guys believe in that? Is hacking simply debugging? <laughs> Maybe debugging is a part of hacking, exactly. I'm like, what's right and what's wrong? What's up and what's down? Uh, it's, 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 it's relative. Yeah, it's, it has all become relative. You need to understand, as far as the human uh, knowledge is growing, growing too, everything's becoming more relative. Now we know of greater numbers. Now we know of greater distances. So it is of all uh, relative. The whole world is relative. But is it really just about debugging it? Because that is what actually happens with hacks. That's what I'm actually trying to tell you guys that most of the hacks in the world don't really either steal stuff or do anything malicious. It does help in debugging. And that's the truth of it. That's, that's, uh, in, uh, that's the majority of hacking in the world, right? Um, but hacking is a force of destruction. Question, have you guys ever been hacked? <laughs> Have you been hacked? By hacked, I mean something that um, stops your daily life, hurts your business, something like that. Yeah. Is that? You want to say something? Or is it a secret? Um, if you go to So, so you have gotten hacked. So you did get your LinkedIn. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, 
I know, I know, I know. I know. No, I'm, I'm actually talking about, for example, personally. Personally, personally, in the sense that, for example, I don't know, someone steals your phone. Let's not forget that now the phones have security. But uh, five, six years ago, or do you guys remember Hello Moto, that mobile phone? Dude, you could just take it off of someone and your life was miserable, wasn't it, right? And, um, but, but I'm saying, have, have we gotten hacked? Do we get hacked? And how exactly do we get hacked in the world? It's probably that much. Human beings, unfortunately. That's what's actually the major target of hacking is. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll take you guys a little further. Generally, the problem is with the human beings and not with the computers, right? Another question. Do you guys think that hacking is going to shut down your real life in the near future? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? I could use with your definitions. Uh, should you be saying crack now? Because then... Cause, cause then yeah. According, according to your definition, then hacking would be something like marriage would be hacking a human being. <laughs> oh, I've got a few things to say about marriage. Don't give me that. Don't give me that. We're going to do something so, about marriage. So, right? so the question that you're, that you're asking is really if we've been cracked. Yeah. Okay. Is it I, look, it's interchangeable. <laughs> look, what is right and what is wrong in today's world. You, you need to decide that. The government used to say take five a day, and now it's not five a day, right? So... Yeah, let's let's not define it that. Uh, is it, what is it? The brute force that you're saying that that no, the no, brute no, force that is no, destroying. No, 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 no. I'm what I'm probably saying is um, something that may turn off your life. That says, for example, are you guys afraid that London electricity may go off because of a hack? <coughs> Do you guys see that as a possibility? Yeah. 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 No, I've never thought about that. There you have it. A sort of flare. Yeah, a closed system, anyway. Yeah. So, so, but, but do you guys think, like, immediately, like, for, for you guys, very specifically, in your daily lives, do you guys think that your lives will get directly affected and promptly shut down because of hacking or cracking? Do you guys? It does. You think so? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll give you a weird example. Yeah. Let's just go back on kind of critical infrastructure level and dabble in what I did when I was really, really young and naive and frivolously optimistic. I was analyzing and talent for terrorism when I was a graduate. Okay, so people from my ethnic group, a lot of the Irish, who were like bad people in the 80s and 90s, uh, in the early 90s they tried to crash the British national grid. That's been released by a lot of yeah. 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 They by counterinsurgency attempts and counterterrorism operations by a combination of uh, now the Special Force Support Group and Now, imagine that on a cyber scale today. Let's say you do a couple of tweaks with these gaps on here that are like 20 for the explosions in London. We change the water uh, recycling system. So let's say you don't kill people, but you get 80,000 people critical conditions into the NHS and create gridlock traffic. And then, once that's been followed, you then use a uh, counter-attack, which has been proven to work by AP 28, maybe 29, on the Ukrainian national grid, mm -hmm. and hit the UK yeah. national grid. Yeah. 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 So, so That gives you a week where you can know Tesco with thieves resupply. So, okay, he's, he's absolutely correct. The threat is pretty real. The threat is pretty real. I would say that the last big hacking, I would say, punch off was uh, uh, last year. Uh, I think Iran and Saudi Arabia got into something, and I think that was the biggest hack last year. And that was actually pretty devastating. That was pretty devastating on both of the sides. But uh, yeah, if you guys want to look at it, last year, we don't get to hear much about it, but the biggest damage is done last year was the fight between these two countries, all about hacking, all about um, just well, trying to cause grief, shall I say? But 
using the same techniques. Right, so just a thing about cracking, I, I just call cracking a perseverance, right? It's just, just take the same example, just take a walnut, right? Try to break it, try, you just need to crack it, mate, just somehow or the other, I don't know. If you don't have anything available, what would we do? How would we crack it, by the way? Louise, can we use this? Like, I mean, we can use <laughs> <laughs> We can probably use a beer bottle, easier. So it's, it's roughly exactly like that. Cracking, cracking does come with knowledge, right? Uh, because things have been done in the past, or because you yourself have, has, have done stuff with your own hands, you know where to look at, you know what to do. But it's, it's just about that. So it generally just starts with a motive. You just say, ha, ah, this, this website. I want to get into it. Then you test the water, you sniff around it, you say, <coughs> what is it running? What's happening with it? What's open? Are there any specific time windows that someone gets in or something? And then you launch a crack attack. Um, I'll, I'll talk about what the other ones are. Just, um, there is a complete dictionary of jargon. Have you guys ever heard of that? There is something called a dictionary of jargon which is at uh, version 4.2.17. And it contains a complete manual of how hackers speak. Right? It's like uh, replacing S with a Z and uh, with a K prefix. K cool, K awesome, whatever you want to go. But yeah, the thing is called jargon. Right, so just a quick thing. I do have to do it. What? Um, um, Kevin was in Sierra Leone uh, doing an election pilot for us. What we actually had to do was we had a, a web app and we wanted to save people's <coughs> ID information very securely, right? And uh, because the browser does not let you download anything, the browser does not let you download any data, what we did was we embedded data into an image. Long press it and save it to your iCloud drive. That's it. Simple. So that you don't transfer it to us, so that you don't transfer it to anyone else. If you want to keep it to yourself, because you do generate it yourself, and we didn't want that data to leave anywhere, we had to store it. So what we did was we just took an image. Silk Road. Have you guys ever heard of that? Uh, search it out a little. It's very old. This is what we used to do. Check out a cute puppy, and the cute puppy actually contains a .dln or a .exe in it. Right? So, now this thing is pretty hacker chic. I just wrote data at the start of the image. It still shows, it's a PNG image, your Safari browser and your Android browser. Long press it, save it, and there you have it. You just saved your data. This is a hack. This is what a hack is. We did not have any way to download information on my user's phone. So we did that. Let's think of a hack. Right, Let, let's do this a little bit further, please. Uh, hacking the blockchain. You guys do know about blockchain, right? I, I figured that the last time it wasn't that up to the speed. But let's just say that a blockchain is, um, is a network. It is a set of computers that, uh, that just join in a network and uh, do calculations within themselves. There is a trust environment between these nodes. And uh, whatever gets written on it is uh, accredited by so, so, so many other computers in the network that it's difficult to replicate it or difficult to hack it. But let's just consider it <coughs> as a network. A blockchain is a network which is just joining together to perform a certain number of computations. It is, the, it is a time to unthink and unlearn. This is not like the regular internet. This is not like the regular internet. This is something else. This is a decentralized world. There are no banks, there is no government, there is no authority, and then there is also no monopoly. If you're looking to, if you're ready to pay 0 0.05 dollars, you can go in and do something on the internet network as you see fit, right? No one's gonna stop you. Whatever is the capability of that thing, you can do as you see fit anonymously. No one's judging you, no one's gonna say anything. It's an open network. At some point, I do think that, do you guys remember that e-donkey, kazaa? Yeah. yeah, right? Let's just say, it's, 
they, 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 they cracked it. They figured it out, right? They, they did figure it out. Right, so this is a public communication system disrupting all current existing network structures. I generally always say that first came the computer, then came the internet, and now we have the blockchain. You do need to consider it as a new paradigm shift. You guys do know that the, in, that the blockchain is roughly the most secure network available, right? It's, it has so far not been cracked. It has been proven and tested by time. It's, uh, it will get broken, of course. Nothing is unhackable. It's um, when the quantum computers come around or whatever comes around. I'll also be discussing how we can actually hack a blockchain and what has actually happened so far in the world. But just a very quick intro of what a blockchain is. I, I've got everything nice to say about it, so I am biased. I realize that I am biased, right? <coughs> it provides you with anonymity. You can be anything on a blockchain network. No one's stopping you. It is a little bit of anarchy. It is a little bit of chaos. And uh, sometimes anarchy and chaos does give birth to uh, a pop. A way around it, right? Okay, guys. So the internet is absolutely heavily monopolized. For example, what's actually happening in the U.S.? They are currently mourning their loss of free internet, isn't it? Right? Because it is absolutely controlled. Let me give you guys another example. In Philippines, they did a survey. They asked people how many people had used the internet. Only 60% said that they had used the internet. Then they asked how many people had used Facebook. And 80% of the people said that they had used Facebook. So, for a couple of people, Facebook was their first connection to the internet. Right? And how that happened was, was like um, mobile operators around, who just provided Facebook and Twitter for free. So, there you have it. Now that's also monopolizing it. You are pushing your product, right? That is a, uh, I do need to shut up. <laughs> right? In addition, let's not forget that your SSL certificates, that your uh, domain names, etc., it is, it is uh, controlled by one uh, sort of company or a consortium, if you want to call it. So yeah, um, whatever you want to make of it. it it's, it's pretty monopolized. But, Right, now let's talk about something a bit proper. It's, I'm, I'm gonna try not to be too technical. So what exactly is blockchain? Blockchain is just a number of computers that join in together, performing calculations, doing whatever you wanna do on it, but they all do that in tending, shall I say, and what they do is they uh, validate that something has been done, and when you've got like, for example, 6,000 computers saying, yes, that is true, that is generally considered true, right? And uh, let's also say that that statement saying that this is true comes out of pretty hardcore processing. So yeah, let's just press to show that it's true. All right. Okay, so consider the blockchain as a network. So what can we do? We have something called a civil attack. What you can do is, for example, if you're on the Bitcoin network, um, I, I'd say how many should you get? I'd say get like, 500, 600 nodes, right? And then try to disrupt the network by flooding uh, with unwanted transactions or something, right? Then, now, I, I see that with the blockchain, this one is what I'm, uh, what I'm generally concerned about. Because while we have formed a network with the blockchain, it is still based on the existing communication channel. It is still based on uh, BT's exchange in Paddington, <laughs> right? So they did a study that um, they were like probably 60% uh, or no, 30% of all Bitcoin transactions go from 13 ISPs in the world, right? So yeah, I mean, if an ISP goes rogue, an ISPs can go rogue, so you never know. Direct denial of service is the same thing as we have with the websites. Just keep on pinging it a lot and it, you will knock it out. But in, in terms of blockchain, the only node just gets 
of the system. That's that. The other modes are still around. And then there's the majority attack. The 51%. We all talk about it, right? What 51% said to change something on the blockchain. The thing is, if, uh, uh, for example, let's just suppose if I own 51% of the Bitcoin network, and if I decided to say, I don't know, give myself 30 million quid, the thing is that when I hack it, and when the news gets out, let's not forget that the Bitcoin price will also fall. No? Catch 22. Catch 22. We also work on the thing that blockchain is that powerful. So I, I, I seriously don't really see how a majority attack can happen like that. Because someone who owns 51% of it is definitely heavily entrusted <coughs> in the network. So it is a catch-22. Don't see that happen. Now, this is a very good example of a hack. This is the DAO hack, very famous. Luis is saying, I need to do it. Right, quickly. What used to happen was there was a smart contract. You had to send it. You could actually extract your, uh, you could give it your DAOs and it would give you Ether back. The problem was that it used to send you Ether first and then take the DAO off you, right? What the hacker did was he just figured, ah, I can stop it at there. And I think he took away 50 million uh, worth of Ether. So now look at what hacking did to Ethereum community. What was decided was that we will have a soft fork, right? The whole community, the Ethereum community decided saying, right, dude, let's just do a soft, let's just do a soft fork, let's just rewrite these little blocks, right, and let it run like that. This was decided. But when they actually started doing it, it couldn't be done. They had to fork it. There was a hard fork which is called the Ethereum now, and then a splinter group said, no. If a mistake has been made, did we hack something? <laughs> but, but, but let's just say that the rest of the community said we're going to go further and uh, they're now called Ethereum Plus. Now, look at the point that I am trying to make. A real world hacking example, which was hacking a smart contract. But when it came around to actually hacking the Ethereum code, when they wanted to erase that mistake, they couldn't thus absolutely proving the point. There you have it. The system that you've made and constructed yourself, Ethereum blockchain, even if everyone agreed, saying, right, let's rewrite it, let's rewrite, saying someone stole it, we need to correct it, they couldn't do it. So there you have it. This hack divided the community, divided the Ethereum community, but I think that this hack kind of also proved that you know, that Ethereum blockchain really can't be reversed. So that's a good indication saying how strong it is. What's been written on the blockchain, more or less, has been written. IBM employs 1,000 blockchain experts for a single project of theirs, FYI. Right? Uh, yes, with the banks, I, I work a lot. Just a small, quick exercise, because now we do have to hurry down. Let's think about writing a prenup agreement on the blockchain as a smart contract. I, I actually, unfortunately, kind of, I was there at the start of this quarter, so I thought about it. I was like, right, it's a legal document. Marriage is also a legal document, right? I just call it, I don't know, a social construct. don't know whether it has any value no more. But, um, what exactly is that? That's a contract, right? I was like, let's, let's write it on a smart contract. The thing is, you cannot make mistakes with it. Once you define in a smart contract saying, things will happen like this, please think up in your mind right before, what do you want to do with it? What should be the parameters A, B, C, X, Y, Z, right? Because once it has been deployed, can't really change it, can you? Right? So I was thinking, right, this is exactly like till death do a spot. This is not even till death do a spot. It's like even when you die, the thing will exist on the damn blockchain. So I actually wanted to do <laughs> I wanted to do a small exercise that said, think of a prenup agreement for yourself, with your partner, 
And now, when you have to put it on the blockchain, consider absolutely all aspects and everything about it. Right, now this is the part that at least out of me, out of me, that you guys want to listen to, right? Probably inside knowledge of what's happening. So you guys do know that it's a buzzword. You guys do know that a lot of stuff is happening. But these are the trends that I see happening at, at the moment. Number one, the networks are changing. We have the public network where everyone's available. It unfortunately gives out a bit too much of information publicly, right? Even though if it's anonymous, let's just suppose I give Caitlin 3,000 quid over the blockchain or something like that. No one knows whether, I, whether it's me, no one knows whether it's Caitlin, I understand that. But even that transaction being so publicly available, it's like a double-edged sword. While it's good for audit and stuff, it's probably unnecessary information. Now what we have is private networks, everyone's forming one. You go into a bank, I would say, I would say, go into any bank in Europe and they have a blockchain, a private blockchain running. I'm, I'm very sure about that. Uh, then we have consortium. Consortium is exactly like, for example, two banks decide saying, right, dude, you start a node, I'll start a node, you start a node, let's have a blockchain network and let's just operate on that. So these are just three companies right here. Then, this is what the new thing is. It's a permission network. It says a blockchain network that has a few public parts and then a few parts that are hidden out, right? Uh, the permission blockchains are the ones that you guys need to be looking at. And you guys can start a permission network all by yourself. It's, it's, it's autonomous applications. You can write something on the blockchain and make sure that it actually happens exactly as you require. But the thing is, how good is it? How? It, it's very rigid. It's very rigid. There is no humanity in it. There's no humanity in it. It's like... A very crude example. So you guys do know that the world is running out of energy and water, right? No. You do. F fossil fuels, yeah, but not renewable energy. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of believe, I kind of believe that we need to leave the planet, right? We need to do something about the situation. Rather than trying to save it, rather than trying to save it, we probably need to run away with it. So imagine there is there's, there's this amount of rigidity that computer systems cannot take. And especially when it comes to the blockchain, which is a, a very basic programming structure attached to it, it is very rigid. Uh, a few, it may work for the bankers and the financial institutions, but for a real life scenario, imagine that it's it's probably a bit too rigid, right? Um, the, we have. Um, smart contracts that I can actually show you guys, which are basically very innovative. Six ways that blockchain is actually going to rock your world. Um, it is going to rock your world. It is actually coming right near you. You guys may be using it, right? You can start it today. It's you can buy now experiment like never before. Have how many over here? How many of you guys have held any crypto? By the way, you guys do that? Oh. Congratulations. So everyone's actually already on it. But unfortunately, 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 right, I was actually asked at the start of my current project saying what, I think it was in NBC interview or something? Yeah, I was actually asked, uh, they asked me, what is the application of blockchain apart from cryptocurrency? And I had trouble saying what it was. But now we have real world stuff kind of happening. Right, guys, a very quick rundown. Yes, please. Um, how can they tell if, if someone's receiving a lot of money on the blockchain? <coughs> it seems like there's this one person, without getting into it, who, who they can tell he's getting lots of donations to continue his propaganda and stuff. Um, how can they tell he's receiving all that? Statistics. It's exactly like how Google AdWords so you don't know who it is. You don't know who it is. You, you don't know who it is. You do not know who it is. But you can make a wild guess, dude. All right. If I were to do a hacking exercise over here, I would actually say to you guys, 
How about you guys hack your ex's email address? I am sure there would be a 98% success rate. I am very sure all of us can actually hack our ex's email addresses because we know the date of birth, because we know the mother's maiden name and all of that, right? Social engineering, social engineering. That's how it works. Number one, social engineering. Number two, it's a complete record out there. Read through it. Spend two or three nights and you can literally go through it. There, there haven't been so many transactions. The network is new. The network is new. You can easily figure it out. No big deal. Just a, just a quick thing about uh, the networks around. There's a Bitcoin network, as you guys know. Then there's the Ethereum network, which provides us with the minimum sort of a programming capability in it. Then Hyperledger. Hyperledger is IBM flavored blockchain which hasn't been publicly around, but apparently they're doing very well. Hyperledger is also a hack. What they've actually done is they've actually reused Apache's um, old service code, uh, the, the queuing code, I think, and probably used to make Hyperledger out of it. And then, of course, there's the list. The, the, the miscellaneous are generally uh, folks around it, around it, right? Okay, uh, guys. Um, Apologies, I do need to finish up. People are saying that. So a bit about us. We are currently Decentralized ID, one of the few projects that I do. Uh, we are trying to put your ID in your control by decentralizing it. We are launching something absolutely cool on the 26th and the 27th. Uh, Alex is around if you guys want to invite. Please come around and visit us. And uh, it is a pretty cool a concept that we are doing. And then, you guys will actually figure out how blockchain can be absolutely implemented in a real world. But at this moment, do you guys think that the blockchain can be hacked? Yes. Yeah. Everyone thinks that. Yeah. Everyone thinks that. And but, but why so? Why so? It has proven itself, hasn't it? The blockchain has proven itself. But in the next 10 years, you, you, blockchain is just not going to sit around, is it? <coughs> you know what I mean. There, we do have a, a new version of Ethereum coming up. That it's exchanges, just not going to sit around. Exchanges can be hacked. Exchange, yeah, <laughs> exchange yeah. you need to understand that there is yeah. something called a network in itself. Exactly. And then when the network connects to the, the outside. The blockchain in itself can't necessarily be hacked, but the applications. The applications. Generally in the computer world, we say, the problem is beyond the screen. You know what that means? Yeah, users. Users, users. users. human beings, human beings. That's, that's, uh, even in the modern world, hacking and cracking just works like this, right? Click here for XX girls, and I don't know, Lloyd's Bank has sent you a present. Don't know why would they would send it, but they have. Um, emails, uh, people, human beings, Human beings are definitely a security threat, no doubt about it. And they are probably the biggest security threat. That is why uh, even stuff happens. But let's just say, as far as the blockchain is concerned, I understand why everyone says yes, because we've seen a lot in our lifetimes. But can I say, look at, look at what's been going on. Has it been able, has it been hacked so far? <laughs> Bitcoin has a name, right? Yes, Quantum computing, maybe. <laughs> yeah. But then again, we will also move to quantum computing, if you know what I'm trying to say. I understand that there are only two quantum computing machines around, uh, but then again, they're also going to become generalized. So we will move to the quantum computers. Yeah, we'll move to the quantum computers as well. But as an idea, as a theory, as to what the blockchain actually is, and how it is, in, how it even exists at this moment, we can see that it hasn't really been hacked like that, right? It's probably because people gather around together. This is a community. Blockchain, if you look at it, is a community of nodes and people joining together to do something. So the community so far is intact. All I would actually say about the blockchain is, especially about hacking the blockchain is, look at the last couple of years, See what has been done with it. The, the, the truth is right there, right in front of our eyes. 
it's not possible. The amount of money that exists on there and the way that it is open, there are probably hacks going around every single second, no? But how successful are they? <coughs> and how, how suitable is blockchain a way towards an unhackable network? That's probably the question. And this is what I, uh, while I understand that there's pessimism, all I would say is look at the track history of the last couple of years, look at how new this technology is, and look at where it's heading. All right? Right, gentlemen. Thank you, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Small little questions are allowed, especially if you're a smoker. That would probably help even more, right? Um, but guys, thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Louise, if she's around. Oh. Oh. Yeah, no one gives me flowers. Oh, no one gives me flowers. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let me get photos of Okay. Oh, Jesus. I think they're